Good day, everyone. Thank you for your attention. My name is Yu Ting Sun. I'm currently the lecturer of traditional Chinese medicine here at Western Sydney University in Australia. I'd like to report on a clinical study that I've conducted on the effect of acupuncture on memory, attention, and learning in healthy adults. And it is a pilot clinical study. So my research question come arise um, by recognizing the increased aging population and its associated risk of chronic illnesses such as dementia. So not many people realize that our cognitive functions such as walking memory started to decline in our mid twenties. Although it's not highly aware, but age associated cognitive decline has been increasing in number. There is some correlation between age-associated cognitive decline towards pathological conditions such as dementia or Alzheimer's diseases. However, the mechanism is not yet clear. And right now, we don't have any known effective in intervention to restore or prevent um, the progression of cognitive decline. So clinically and on research previously, we have seen some encouraged effect of acupuncture enhancing brain activities, which may be able to ameliorate um, cognitive impairments in pathological cohorts. However, its effect on non-pathological cohorts is not clear. Hence, that's why my research is conducted in this area. So before, before I go on to talk about my research, I want to give a little bit of a background about what is age-associated cognitive decline and how we may be able to prevent it in turning into a pathological condition. So if you can see this picture, it's telling you about the um, relationship between cognitive function decline and the progression of aging. So our brain agent is like wear and tear. So they become to decline as we progress in terms of aging. However, we will reach a point where we hit it's right here in the middle. We call it a mild cognitive impairment or age-associated cognitive decline. So we have been seeing um, situations that most people come to this stage. They have some impairment, but they stay relatively stable or even they can revert the decline and becoming just a little bit mild cognitive impairment. But somehow there are also another cohort that can turn into a pathological change, which become a clinical diagnosed Alzheimer's diseases and other dementia. So what is intelligence and what is cognitive function? Uh, if we talk about intelligence, we can pretty much put it into two separate aspects. We call it either fluid intelligence or crystallized intelligence which it, it interlinks together, okay? However, one side of our um, function declines quicker than the other side. So this is the context of um, the different um, two domains of our intelligence. The fluid intelligence, including reasoning, problem solving, logic reasoning, working memory, executive function, process speed, and reasoning. And whereas in crystallized intelligence, it's about ability of use skills, use knowledge and experience, lifetime knowledge, achievement, language, general knowledge, recall, and long-term memory. Now, both of them are important and part of our cognitive function domains. However, in terms of fluid intelligence, its ability to solve problems without prior knowledge started to decrease its function in the late 20s, and it's fixed. You can't really return this condition. Whereas in crystallized intelligence, you have ability to apply prior knowledge to solve problems, which usually this intelligence increased development uh, with, with learning, continuous learning, and it will uh, decline until mid 70s, which is malleable. So in science, always talk on neuroscience, we can pretty much put our cognitive function into five main domains, which would categorize them as memory and learning, attention and concentration, thinking and problem solving, language and linguistic ability, and visual and spatial functions. Now, in my study, I'm particularly interested in memory, attention, and learning because they they are most critical and it's most viable for healthy adults in terms of their um, um, you know, prevention and development. So memory, there are several different aspects of memory. For the most common ones, we can associate them with sensory memory, working memory, 
a long term memory. Whereas long, uh, working memory sometimes being referred to short term memory, which we record the information acoustically, and long term memory, or we also call it semantic and episodic memory, can be recorded semantically or via episodic recording. So brain areas, I will do a bit of background on brain areas because this will be linked to my research um, information um, on how I measure the activities. So we have a quick look on the few main uh, structure of the brain, which are associated with working memory. In here, we have frontal lobe and parietal lobe, which shows in the um, red aspect and the green aspect of this picture right here. And long-term memory is is a little bit more complex. It involves a system constructed with a fixed set of neural network that interconnect with each other, and also the hippocampus, which is a must for learning new skills, which is this hook right here, shown in the brain. So why am I interested in attention memory and learning? Because these three domains interconnect and relate to each other. Only when sufficient attention is acquired, then your memory become activated. And memory activation is associated with your learning as well. Clinically, that's commonly being misdiagnosed with dementia and depression because of lack of attention in the cases of severe depression. So in my research, I particularly want to see whether acupuncture will improve the measure of cognitive performance in compare to control uh, in comparison to control in healthy individuals. And we hypothesize that acupuncture will have some positive effect um, against uh, control groups. So in my study objectives, I want to look at two main aspects of um, their cognitive function. So the first one, the primary objective, I want to look at their um, attention, power of attention, continuity of attention, um, and their quality of their secondary episodic memory, the quality of working memory, and the speed of their memory. So I measure this through a computerized mental performance assessment system, we call it Compass, which it has various of um, tasks that we can record and use to measure their functions. So in our episodic memory, we use word presentation, immediate word record, delayed word record, and word recognition to test their long-term memory or episodic memory. For attention task, we use a four choice reaction time, which we measure the person's reaction time when they hit a particular attention task. In, their, um, in front of their screen. For working memory, we have measured three tasks, in, including impact task, serial seven subtraction, and serial three subtraction, which is a relatively high demand cognitive load for their process information. And also we measure their sustained attention. We call it RVIP, Rapid Visual Information Processing. Okay, for the um, secondary outcome measure, we want to look at three aspects. We want to look at their mood and their brain waves, as well as their expectancy of acupuncture. So for the mood, we want to uh, measure participants' mental fatigue scales and see if the actual um, assessment task or acupuncture have any changes in terms of their mood and their mental fatigue scales. And for the EEG or the brain, and we were particularly interested in the event-related potential P300. So what it means is that study have shown that the P300 um, wavelengths has closely associated with the working memory function. So we wanted to look at that, that aspect. And also expectancy effect is to measure whether or not um, the patient has expectation of acupuncture and that may contribute to their positive outcome as well. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, the P300 opal paradigm is something that we are interested to look at because the magnitude and the timing of this signal have shown to be closely correlated to the function of decision-making and working memory. So an overview of our study design. So it is a parallel group randomized waitlist control study where we have an active treatment or acupuncture treatment group and a waitlist control group. So the acupuncture procedure, we will select four acupuncture points using manual 
electrical stimulation on the acupuncture side of stomach 36 to 70, heart 7, Shengmen, Bai Hui, GV20, and Zhongwan, CV12 for six sessions within a period of two weeks. The point is selected due to a previous literature search on the studies that uh, have shown that the acupuncture have a potential um, effect towards cognitive function. That's why we have selected these four points. So assessment of outcome measure were placed at baseline post-treatment and two week follow up post-treatment. So we want to see if there's any uh, lengthened effect of um, acupuncture after two weeks without any treatments. So here is an overview of our study design and recruitment. So it is a relatively small project because we have limited time and resources. So we have assessed um, uh, for 18 participants, we exclude seven of them, which they fall outside of our inclusion criteria, including smokers, pregnant women under the age of 25, or they have a psychiatric condition. So we have end up with 11 participants. We random and randomize them into two groups, the active treatment group and the wait list control group. None of them have lost their follow-up and then we have assessed all their data. So here is an overview of the acupuncture protocol and timeline. So at week one and two, uh, active treatment group or acupuncture group um, will conduct a, a baseline assessment where they, they will complete the compass test and the EEG test and all the other tests that I mentioned before. And they're followed by six acupuncture treatment on above protocol um, every two to three days interval. And they will have an endpoint assessment right after their last acupuncture treatment. And at the same time in weightless control group, they will be conducting a baseline assessment and endpoint assessment, whereas there's no treatment in between the two weeks time. At week four, both groups will be uh, conduct the follow-up assessment to see if there's any lingering effect of acupuncture. And after week four, the weight list control group will receive the same amount of protocol of acupuncture treatment and to be fair to them as well as um, to uh, satisfy the ethics uh, uh, committee request. So here is an overview of acupuncture protocol. So we use a standardized stainless steel um, needles with uh, the standard size. Every point are manipulated until a dirty sensation is elicited and needle was retained for 30 minutes on all the points and were manipulated every five minutes with the even back and forward rotation at a frequency of 120 hertz for a period of 10 seconds each. So here is an overview of the characteristic of our participants. So just given as an outlook, because our study is relatively small, so we didn't have the chance to really look at the age variant and uh, a gender variant um, and to measure whether or not the age variation and gender variation has influenced our results. So our mean age of acupuncture group is 43.83. Um, years old and our weight list control group is 32.2 um, age. So here is the result for our episodic memory. So we measured their immediate word record and delayed word record. Interestingly, we haven't seen a difference um, before, after acupuncture treatment. Um, actually, you can see a slightly decline um, post acupuncture treatment um, in the acupuncture group. So results for working memory. So we have assessed the three um, working memory tasks, which was N back, 07, and 03 subtraction. Amongst the three, 07 subtraction requires the highest cognitive load in order to um, complete the task. And here we can see the improvement of accuracy for acupuncture treatment group before and after the treatment. Um, whereas in the um, release control group, we have seen not much uh, change. As a result for attention, so we measure the four choice reaction time. For pre and post, we haven't seen a significant difference um, between both groups for acupuncture and weight list control before and after. However, at the four choice reaction time, pre, post, and follow up, 
we have seen some uh, increase in, in uh, reaction time for the acupuncture group. For the result for the P300 uh, event-related potential, so we look at um, several different lobes by placing different um, uh, electric conductivity knots um, into the skull. Uh, we have noticed that the significant uh, reduction is detected in the parietal lobe, where their uh, amplitude has a major uh, shorten, shortening in acupuncture group, and um, whereas in um, witness control group, there's not much change. However, we haven't seen a change in the latency for this measurement, which is interesting. Um, for most cognitive function, we um, conducted um, through e, uh, P300 um, ERPs, um, a short-term amplitude and the lengthened um, latency has usually shown to be um, a good a cognitive function. And patients that are diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's disease or dementia usually have a short-term a, a, a short latency and a widened um, uh, amplitude. So in this case, we haven't seen any change in the latency, but we have seen a shorten of amplitude. So we're trying to um, understand the result we have detected through this pilot study, because we have some um, significant difference in certain um, assessment and some we don't have. And for P300, we have also noticed only the amplitude had a significant change, but not the latency. So a quick summary of what we've done. So in this summary, the current study is aimed to obtain preliminary data to see if acupuncture will improve cognitive function in healthy adults compared to no treatment control. So we have detected the significant differences in the working memory associated task, serial seven subtraction. And this suggests acupuncture may positively influence working memory function in healthy adults. However, this function only appears to be evident in high demand cognitive task, which is this particular task. If the um, task is associated with working memory, but it's relatively low demand, acupuncture doesn't seem to make a change that's reflects through the MBAC and the serial three subtraction task. There's no change there. We also notice a significant decrease in P300 amplitude, um, but not the latency, uh, which we believe there is a close uh, association between the neural modulation network um, and the activation of default mode network. So what does that mean? It, re it pretty much summarizes as that um, acupuncture help to reserve a bit more brain power through the activation of a default mode network on the same amount of attention tasks that's required. So in another way, in simplified form, the acupuncture stimulation on the four points um, may perhaps uh, preserve the brain power um, to conduct a certain amount of activity. However, um, this study is relatively small, so we can't really draw any definite conclusion. Um, however, we do value the initial um, preliminary data that we have obtained, and, and a larger sample size may be crucial to have a better understanding of acupuncture's role for memory attention and cognition. So here I conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention and listening. Again, my name is Yu Ting San. If you have any question related to the study I conducted, feel free to email me via this email address. Thank you.